Hi everyone, happy Wednesday night. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday. I am so glad you are here. Uh, please say hello when you come on and let me know that you can hear me and that you can see me. And I want to be able to see your comments as well so um, you guys can give me some feedback. Nina, you are the first one on tonight, my friend. First one on, good to see you. Uh, this is Dixie Bell Paint Page, the Dixie Bell Company Paint Page. Um, we are Dixie Bell is one of the or is the industry leader in chalk mineral paint, in my opinion. I am an avid user. I've been using Dixie Bell Paint straight up for almost four years now, and I'm a brand ambassador for them. And we go live right here on the Dixie Bell's page um, daily. Um, hourly almost and give you guys some insight into our environment as we're working in our shops or in our boutiques or in our garages which is where I am and creating something beautiful and how easy it is to use the paint so um, welcome to my shop uh, hello Deb and thank you for saying hello hi Aurora uh, Dixie Bell is always here in the background as well while we're live that way if you ask questions and I don't see you thank you Nina thank you for sharing you guys there's a share button thank you Nina for reminding me I always forget to ask if you guys will just hit that button that will send it out to more people and we get to share the love a little bit more and I would really really appreciate that I just realized that you could see my mops and brooms in the background I don't usually face this direction that is really ugly and I'm so sorry <laughs> usually we're a straight on shot to my staging wall um, but anyway it's okay I wanted you guys to be able to see this piece at the angle that we're working on tonight so hi Brenda hi Kelly a lot of us here are used to seeing each other we say hello to each other we talk there we go there's Dixie Bell right there um, thank you Dixie Bell for being here tonight with me hi Dottie uh, Anyway, we're very familiar with each other and we would love to know if you're new to Dixie Bell, if you're new to this tonight's program, tonight's broadcast. This is every single Wednesday night, Whimsical Wednesday. We would love to know if you are new here as well. Just say hello, tell us where you're tuning in from and please, please, please just type in your comments. Type in your comments, type in your question. There is no stupid question. Um, I am sure if you are asking the question or wondering the question someone else is wondering the same thing so don't be shy ask away I will answer you someone else here on the page will answer you Dixie Bell will answer you Sue what are you talking about you're old what are you talking about Sue sunshine you are not old um not new to Dixie Bell or Tracy Nina I know you're not hello Elaine so you guys hi michelle uh this is what we're doing tonight we are working on we started this desk last wednesday night so as you know a lot of times we start a project and we'll work on it for a few weeks um i did the back side with you guys we talked about priming um and we used um a white and we just got it painted and we kind of talked about some design planning so i've still got that going on on the back side but i wanted to flip it around because this is the side that's going to have color the back side's going to be all black and white so this is a French provincial desk um, I'm gonna turn this here a little bit so you can see um, we've got the cabriolet legs you can see those there and the drawers it's got two one two drawers on each side in the center drawer right here um, so what have I done so far let me tell you what I've done first of all I gave it a good bath with our white lightning which Dixie Bell's a one-stop shop they have every everything um, that you could possibly need at one location and we've put a link to um, the place where you can shop it's the website where you can shop it's at the top of this video if there's anything that you see that you want to try um, you can just click there and go shop you can look for a, a retailer I'm sure there's a retailer in your area if you would like to go to their shop go to the website type in your zip code in the Dixie Bell retailer finder section and you can be uh, directed to a retailer in your area um, what else can I tell you? Uh, uh, uh. That's it for now. Oh, oh no, I put another link up there. Well, there's a link to my Facebook page, Tracy's Fancy. I would love it if y'all would follow me on Tracy's Fancy. Um, I show everything I'm working on always, and it's always with Dixie Bell Paint on my page. So I'd love it if you'd give me a follow over there, a like and a follow over there. And then I also put a link to a, a community paint group, one of, Dixie, one of Dixie Bell's community paint groups, Chalk Mineral <coughs> Paint Enthusiasts. And it's for all creatives, all painters, um, all crafters. Uh, there are no boundaries. Um, 
it doesn't matter what kind of paint you like, what kind of paint you use. We just, it's a community that Dixie Bell has built and put together for everybody to go there and share their work every single day on a daily basis. So if you are looking for inspiration, that is a great place to, to find it. And I put the link there for you. Thank you, Nina. You liked my blog about my about my angel wings. Thank you, thank you for that. It is a beautiful piece, isn't it? Piece, isn't it? Sure. Okay, so we are doing a giveaway right now. We're gonna do this, Dixie Bell. We're gonna do a giveaway. So Dixie Bell will announce before the end of this live. You have to be watching this live. This is one of the four new gemstone mooses. These are them right here. We've got gold, silver, a garnet red, and a copper. They are absolutely gorgeous. They are the gemstone mousse. It is not a wax. It is not an oil-based wax. It is a mousse. It is a water-based mousse. It's whipped. Um, the gold is thicker than the others. It is whipped to a, like a mousse, just like a mousse. It's easy to use. It's not dry and cracky. Um, the others, each one has a little bit of its own consistency. Last week I opened one up and it spilled out and I was like, oh, I didn't know that some of them were loose, but some of them are, but they have the same coverage, the, um, the same high pigmentation. That's the copper. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can blend these. They are super, super easy to use and they give the most amazing shine. Like, like gold leaf shine, like super, super amazing shine. So I wanna give away a gold one tonight. So listen to me, I'm gonna tell you how you can win this, all right? Let's get moving on our paint and I'm gonna tell you how you can comment and win this and Dixie Bell will choose a winner at the by the end of this live, okay? Hi Pat, hi baby, how are you? Okay, so we're gonna talk about blending a lot of colors. I'm gonna use every single one of these colors on this piece. The, all of the backside is black and white. I want all of the color on the face of this deck. Most times this type of desk is floated in a room. So usually not very many people see this side, only the people that are actually sitting at it. And I want all the happy going on right here. The other side's got a party going on too, but it's mostly black and white stripe. But I want a lot of color on this side. So we're going to talk about blending and mixing colors um, on the piece itself. Rosa, you're so funny. Moose me. I love that. Moose, M-O-O-S-E. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. So we're going to talk about mixing colors on the piece itself. So what have I done so far? I've washed in white lightning, um, cleaned it up in white lightning. I boss primed it and I don't have the jar because I've already used the whole thing on several projects. And the new gray boss, boss new gray came out today. That's this right here. This is one coat of gray boss. I also have a coat. This had a coat of gray boss as well, but now I've got a coat of fluff because I'm doing black and white stripes on the inside probably vertical, probably black and white. I call this the knee hole, the knee hole. <laughs> so probably vertical black and white stripes and then lots of color going on here. So how can you win the mousse? Let's talk about blending this color right here. This is a color I don't use very often. This is a 16 ounce jar. Uh, Dixie Belle paints come in eight ounce, 16 ounce and 32 ounce. This is a 16 ounce, the middle size jar, um, and it's apricot. This is apricot. It's a beautiful color. I just don't use it that often because I'm more of a bold color girl, and this is very, very not bold. Very not bold, right? But I, it's a little too bold for what I wanted it tonight in the background. So, um, oh, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, Denise. I'm really, really sorry, girl. Maybe we can distract you for just a minute with a little bit of happy right here. I'm so sorry you're going through that. And if we've got prayers on here, um, I'm sure we've got some prayer warriors watching right now. Thank you, Aviance. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's see. Let me show you what I did. I got my brush and I dipped it straight in to my paint right here. And I put it on. I want to, I wanted a backdrop. I, oh, before I get started, before I get started, sorry. I want this off. I'm going to put a Would You Been Mold here tomorrow morning on Dixie Bell's page. <laughs> um, and I want this off. I don't want this super traditional. Uh, this is just, um, let's see if I can get it off. This is just nailed in with these tiny little nails. They're not screws. So the only way that you can get these off is to get something underneath. It doesn't go all the way through. You literally have to get something. You have to really want it off. And I'm okay if I gouge the wood a little bit because I am gonna put 
a mold on there. So what I normally do is I have a hammer. There we go. So this is a tiny, like an eyeglass screwdriver. Um, so I just slide it back behind there and then you just have to start kind of prying evenly just like this. There we go. I did it without too much damage. There we go. See it had the, see the little tiny nails? They're just little tack nails. It's not screws. Sometimes they're screws and that's helpful. But um, Nina, thank you, honey. This is just a tiny little tack nail. Um, oh my God, Dick Spell, one on this live. You did, but I can't get my email to go through my email. Oh, 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 okay. Dixie Bell hopefully will take note of that. Um, and honestly, I think you might should message them. When this video is over, I will go back and look through the comments and look at that. Um, okay, so I've taken that off. I'm just going to paint right over it. The mold is actually going to cover that completely, so I'm not worried about that. All right? Uh, so that's that. All right, so when I started painting with my apricot, because I wanted to serve as a backdrop for a bunch of bold colors, lots of layering, lots of bold colors, um, I put this on, and it was just a little too peachy. It's, it is apricot, that is, it is true, but do you see, I don't know if you can see, oh, you see the difference? Do you see how this is super, not super, much more apricot, and this is very washed out. So this is what I want. So what I did was I got my fluff, my white paint. I poured a little bit out on a top just like this. In fact, I'm gonna use it right now. I just had it next to me on the floor. I was like, ah, that's too bright. So I dip my brush in the white and I have a sprayer with me as well. Just kind of give it a little bit of a spritz. I've got a little bit of white on my brush and I just started blending it down and toning it down with the white right on top of the piece. You don't have to have, you know, extra pots to start stirring and, um, you know, you don't have to blend your, your paint off of the piece. You can do it right on the piece. Now there are some drawbacks to that. So let me give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a tip here. If you are being super free with your color and you're okay doing it as you go, that's fine. But if you are gonna want to blend special colors and you wanna paint your entire piece and it be very clean and very, this isn't gonna be that way. This is gonna be a very organically grown piece. So if you want a whole color, then you do need to mix your special color, get it how you want it on a plate, then try to recreate it and put it in a big bowl and have enough to cover your whole piece. Because if you make a custom blend, and you don't have enough to cover your whole piece and you try to match it up, it's hard. It's really, really hard. So what I'm doing right now is just toning things down and I'm gonna blend a lot of colors with you guys right here as I go, okay? So I only did half the piece so I could get over here and do the other half the piece. So the question that I'm gonna ask you is, um, oh, you're so welcome, okay, so the question I'm going to ask, I have my microphone on, so I'm going to move away from the camera just a little bit, is when you see this apricot color, which is apricot, when you see that color next to the lighter color, what, do you, what would you call this lighter color? If this were a Dixie Belle color in a jar, which it's not, what would you call it? Tell me what you would call the toned down version of apricot. So I'm going to go ahead and put the brighter apricot. It's really not even bright, you guys. It's a lovely, subtle color. I just wanted a little bit more of a flesh tone as my backdrop. So you can really see the difference here. I want a lot of layers. I want brush strokes. I want their, this is going to be not my typical, whimsical, super detail uh, lots of clean lines. This one's going to have a lot of water, a lot of drips, a lot of movement, and a lot of colors. So, flesh tone. <laughs> Did someone say, are you saying you would call it flesh tone? Okay, hopefully you're just saying that's what it is, was a flesh tone. I don't know that I would buy something called flesh tone. Um, so, you can see the difference here between the two colors, right? So I want to get this on and then I'll move back over closer to y'all, but uh, I just want to get this on so it can be drying. I'm going to go ahead and open my white and I'm going to have all of my colors open here in just a little bit, putting a little bit of white on here. I'm just putting the white right on it. Uh, if your paint starts to dry a little bit, just give it a spritz. Look, see, I add the white there and just start working them together. 
and I didn't care that it was going to be all different colors, but I am telling you guys, if you want to do a special color and you want your whole piece done at the same time, mix it up in a separate jar. If you don't mind playing on your piece, and I'm going to show you how I played with some colors on a uh, lid here in just a second and show you uh, two colors that I got out of mixing it, and I want to do those on my piece tonight as well. So this here is a mix of apricot and fluff, just to kind of kick back that apricot color just a little bit. Hopefully Dixie Belle is looking at the um, whatever y'all are answering, <laughs> because I'm not, because I want to get this coat on here before we move over. But do you see how fast and I'm not worried about like the direction of my paint. Um, I plan to do a lot of scraping on this and exposing colors. Um, I plan to do a lot of dry brushing over the top of it in different colors, a lot of highlighting. So it's kind of a messy look. If you're new to painting, uh, this is a great look to start with because there are no mistakes. This is a really, this is easier than doing a one coat color. Just putting a bunch of colors together on a piece and just playing with it and being free with it um, is a lot of fun. And th there really aren't mistakes. All right, so that, I'm gonna get a little bit of white on this over here because this is all apricot. There we go, just a little white followed with a little bit of water. Just kicks it back a little bit. So one color that I don't have up here is green. I'm not gonna use tree frog green on this, but I do have a color that um, I love that you can get by using tree frog green when you mix the color with it. Um, and if you aren't familiar with tree frog green, I'll show you in just a minute. All right, so that coat is done. Let me bring this all the way around the side here. And then we are gonna break out some actual colors on the side over there that's dry. We're gonna let this dry. If you're new to Dixie Belle chalk paint, mineral paint, it is dry in about 20 minutes, depending on where you are in the humidity, but you're, it's usually one thin coat, is, and if you didn't use too much water, it's usually dry in about 20 minutes. All right, and remember I said I don't care about that because that is actually gonna be covered by a mold. Okay, so, oh, cotton candy, I love that. I love that. Let's see. Uh, apricot blush, I love that. Hi from Alamo Ranch, hi Gina. Oh, peach bellini, I hope they choose Julie. <laughs> I want a peach bellini. Yeah, I like that, I like that color a lot. Um, okay, so a, a tree frog green, by the way, guys, that's that color right behind me. That's the chest that we did. Um, we started together. That's tree frog green with a black wash. So tree frog green is a very bold and vibrant green. Um, and I did a black wash over it and it just really knocks the color back and it makes it an emerald. Like as high Susan, it makes it the most true emerald green that you can get. It is just gorgeous. So that says too, because that's not a blend. That's a straight up color. Let it dry and then do a color wash over the top of it. I used black paint, but you can also use black wax to do the same thing. So that's that. If you want to mix tree frog green with another color paint though, I was looking for a citron and actually Brandy said, add some um, daisy to it. So I mixed tree frog green and daisy on a plate and kind of played with it and I got the coolest citron color and i love citron you know citron's like that it's not lime but it's you know a little more lemony than a lime um beautiful oh, apricot kisses i love that sweet cheeks you guys are awesome i don't know if i'm hungry or need a drink isn't that the truth fluffy peach um that oh i love that what was the apricot kisses i really like that okay so sorry all right, so here we go. We're gonna go back over here where this is dry, and I'm gonna show you some colors that I mixed today. So here is, this right here is Dixie Belle's Purple. This is the Purple of Purples. It's Amethyst. This is like Barney Purple, you guys. It is completely purple. It's called Amethyst. Um, I love it. I love the color. Dixie Belle also has 
a lavender, which is called Lucky Lavender. Really cool colors. But if you're wanting a violet, which I was wanting a violet color, um, neither one of those are violet. So uh, you, can make, you can make your own. So what can, also, when you're trying to make purple, you know, let's say you didn't have purple. Let's say you don't have amethyst. But you have peony. Sorry, peony. <laughs> let's say you have peony, peony, and cobalt blue. You have these two in your arsenal of paint, but you don't have the purple and you want it. You can mix these two together and you can get purple. Did you know that? Barney purple. <laughs> yes, I do have fancy grins. I don't think they've ever seen Barney though. Okay, so this color, let me show you. This color on the top, not the blue, not this. This color right here, which is what I was after, is violet. I call this a violet color. And I got this by mixing peony and cobalt blue. Beautiful, right? And that's what I wanted. But then I decided to take it a step further and see what other color I could get. So I added more cobalt blue. So this is my violet that I mixed. I added more of this cobalt blue and I got this gorgeous purple right here. So all of these colors right here come from blending or mixing peony and cobalt blue. Don't even have to have purple or amethyst in your arsenal. You don't even have to. They also have aubergine. I forgot about this. It's a super deep purple. It's almost a black purple. So anyway, this can happen. The reason it's important to know this is because you, is you can do this on your piece while you're working. So if you start trying to blend colors, people spend a lot of time going, oh, I want to do that, you know, that blend or that ombre, or I want to do a blend and with some highlights. Well, you got to be kind of careful what colors you're choosing because if you choose colors that are very different from each other like blue and pink and you blend those you're going to end up with purple on your piece it's just going to happen it'll be one of these shades but you're going to end up with purple if you're blending out an area between a blue and a pink that's going to happen so you have to kind of be cognizant of that me, I want that to happen. I'm looking for that to happen. If you don't want that to happen, then keep your colors close to each other. If you want to do some blends in a gray family, then use all gray families. Maybe lean into like a little bit of a blue gray if you want to pull in a different color. Or if you want to blend and you want to have all pinks, then use all pinks. But if you're going to use contrasting colors, you need to know what's going to happen when you use them together. If you're going to use tree frog green and daisy yellow you're going to end up with a citron which is a very limey green in the middle where they meet okay so it's important to play with some colors on a lid or a paper plate or you know a piece of scrap paper <laughs> like i have right here um kind of play with them and see what see what you're going to get sure your hair's this sure your, is it sure your hair's this color which color your hair's this color that's awesome. <laughs> is your hair Barney purple? Or we're going to call it fairy purple. Um, okay, so let's get started. I don't really have a plan, y'all. This is so exciting. Let me open up all my colors. I'm going to get them down here around me. I'm going to be using um, a little bit of purple. Uh, I'm going to be using probably quite a bit of the peony. Um, I am going to be using, this is Dixie Belle, but it's in a ball jar. I've had it in this ball jar forever, and I don't know why. But this is Peacock. Um, I don't know how it ended up in here, but I actually don't use Peacock that often. Isn't that crazy? I end up using um, uh, Mermaid's Tail over Peacock. I don't know why, but this is Peacock. Gorgeous, gorgeous, vibrant blue. Um, I'm going to use a, a way toned down of that. This is a blue-green. This one is called the Gulf. This is my favorite color. Uh, the Gulf, Peony, and Flamingo, these are my favorites. So I'm um, going to use a little bit of the Gulf. I'm opening them all up. The good thing about Dixie Belle paint, you guys, is you can open your jars and leave them open. They're not going to dry up hard solid immediately. They're going to get thicker. As you leave them open while you're painting, they, are, they will thicken up. If you want to thicken your paint on purpose, then leave them open, and they'll thicken up. If you come back to them later after you've put the lid on and you're like, dang, I don't want heavy body paint right now. I wish I wouldn't have let this thicken up so much. Scoop a little bit of that, scoop a little, 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 scoop a little bit out, pour it into a bowl and put a little bit of water in it and stir it up and it just, it'll thin right out. That's the beauty of it. Lids, hard to get off. 
I struggle all the time. So I just take my lid. It will not work on a wood table. It will not work on a Formica table. You have to do it on like hard cement. I take it down on the ground. I hold it on the side. This is the cement. I whack it. I just whack the lid, but kind of spin when I do that. So I just whack it. Just like your mom taught you how to open the pickle jar. Same thing. Same thing, people. Just hit it. Yes, in the past, I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't had the jar open on me. But anyway. Um, oh, Stephanie, I'm so glad. Okay, and this is flamingo uh, right way up in my top face so you cannot see down here but I have all of those open oh I'm also going to be using soft pink soft pink may not whacking on tile here racking she said racking uh, soft pink you know some people might say that that might not show very well against the apricot um, but look it actually does you can see it and I can leave that there right because I don't know what we're doing. I have no idea where I'm going. All I know is I want a lot of layers and a lot of color. And then I always ground my pieces, not because they're in trouble, but because they are sometimes very chaotic. And I said tonight's live was gonna be beauty and chaos. You have to find beauty and chaos. There is a lot of beauty and chaos. And I usually bring my chaos, tone it down a little bit with black and white. I try to add black and white to all my pieces somewhere. Um, you have marbles in your paint jars. I have marbles in my paint jars. Someone else has marbles in their paint jars. I don't have marbles in my paint jars. Michelle, it is not, hon. Can you tell? Can you tell that I'm creating and I'm not worrying about anyone's order or what they want? <laughs> I love my clients. I do. I love, love, love my clients. My customs are usually so much fun. Um, but this piece, um, no. I'm just creating with it. This piece and that piece. That piece is not sold either, which I'm tempted to put it in my office. Uh, I'm very tempted. But anyway, um, okay, so here we go. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I've got an arsenal of brushes right here next to me. Look, this little Lazy Susan, you guys, is pretty cool. I love it. It spins. It's just a plastic Lazy Susan. So I've got this right here next to me, and I'm going to use all these brushes, and I also have oh, where did I put them in here yeah so I have some a bunch of brushes I've got a bunch of dry brushes because I love my chip brushes um I have my watercolor brushes I like these because they're kind of long and they let me kind of touch from it to make me feel very fancy so I have those and then I have uh, the Dixie Belle chip brushes and then my favorite brushes, which uh, is the Dixie Belle Mini and the Dixie Belle Flat Medium. These are, my, these are my favorites. And I actually want one of my French tip brushes, but it's over there and I don't feel like going to get it. Oh, is her hair on the mic? Is something, something wrong with the sound? Uh, oh, how, look how long your hair is going to lose. Oh, thanks, Melinda. Thank you. Thanks. This eating healthy has been really, really good for me. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you for saying that. Okay, so I'm not even going to worry about this apricot that's on my piece. I probably will use that with my light pink. I'm not worried about it. All right, here I go. Here I go. Here I go. I really, really don't have a plan, you guys. I don't. I don't have a plan. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm just coming on here just like, here we go. Let's see. I am going to start with I'm gonna start with some peony I'm gonna start with some peony so I'm just gonna kind of uh, I've got some brushes uh, rags here next to me I'm gonna kind of wipe some of this off I'm gonna have my water my water thing near me and I'm just gonna start kind of putting some color on like just doing a little bit of a color wash like this and I really like the idea of going in different directions going to try to just be super free with it you see that I got all of that out all of that out in one with one dip okay we're just going to kind of leave that and I think I will do it over here in the middle as well just a little bit here now remember this is going to have a mold on it and I'm probably going to have to heavy that up some um, we'll heavy this up right here And right now it looks very uh, kind of chopped up. And I'm just going to focus on this part right now. Can I'm not sure how far down y'all can see, but 
will go like this. <laughs> I never do this. I never paint like this. Uh, Tracy, do you know if, the, oh yes, the mousses, they're all available. Wendy, my link is on the top of this video. If you click that, it takes you straight over to Dixie Bell. Let me tell you where to find it though, okay? When you are looking for the new mousse or the new stencils, there's a damask, a Moroccan stencil. I think the damask is sold out. If the stencils show as sold out, major tip here, guys. If the stencils show as sold out, keep checking back every single day they have uh they dixie, they're made at dixie bell right there in their shop right there at the dixie bell plant um and they've ordered a new cutting machine and they are keeping up with the orders as fast as they can and they're restocking every single day so if it says sold out today it doesn't mean it'll say sold out in the morning they've got the night shift on them as well so they're making stencils around the clock so that's the hounds tooth stencil it's available i just checked the moose is too so let me tell you where you find them when you follow my link and you go on over to the website look under paint Look for the options. They'll be like paint, uh, tools, finishes. Look under paint for the mousse, the new mousse. Look under paint and then look under uh, at the drop down from paint. One of the little uh, choices is new releases. Go under new releases and that's where you'll find your mousse and it's where you'll find the new stencils and it's where you'll find Gray Boss as well, okay? Okay, so yes, this is fun. Um, Oh, good, Melinda. Yes, I am going to use the gold mousse. I'm not going to use these on this piece, but I am using the gold mousse on this piece. The gold mousse will be, my molds will be covered in the gold mousse and knocked back with some black wax. Okay, so that's that. I did that. I'm going to kind of just spritz that with a little bit of water, let it do its thing. See, I love this look right here. Like right there, I love that. It reminds me of canvas painting a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to dip... I'm going to go ahead and dip in some Flamingo, same brush. I did not use a different brush. Um, let's see. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit some Flamingo over here. I think the, the beauty of this is just not overthinking it. And I think I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to keep my, I'm going to go deeper as, as I get over here. So I think these are going to be my lighter colors up in here. Um, and then this over here is already starting to dry. I mean, it's already dry, so I can go ahead and hit some colors like that. Now, I love Flamingo and Peony together, where they're blending together here. I love that look. So I'm gonna dip right back over into my Peony, and I'm gonna put that right in here. Guys, I honestly, I have no recipe, no idea what I'm doing. This is what I would love for you guys to try at home. Right now, we're just doing a base. So I'm going to let that be my, uh, my pink and purple brush. Now, I'm going to use one of my chip brushes, and I'm going to dip into the gulf. And I think I'm going to take the gulf. We'll do it about right. Oh, love this color. Love this color. How fun is this? Put it up in here. My goodness, that's so pretty. This is so freeing. I hope you'll try this. I hope you'll try this at home. I do. I'm going to take it. I'm going to hit it on my rag a little bit. Um, she has mine in getting all for tomorrow. Nina, that's awesome, hon. That's awesome. Now I'm going to hit that with a little bit of water. That line's a little bit straight for me right there. I'm going to hit that with some water. And I'm going to take that out. See, I just thinned it out. Take it off to the side here. Now look here in between. I'm getting a little bit of a lavender right there as I start to blend those colors together because I'm introducing a green or a blue to it. So I've got a little bit of a pink and a little bit of green going on and it's bringing me into a lavender. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper here. I'm gonna dip into my um, peacock and I'm gonna get some peacock going right here. I'm gonna spray a little bit of water and I'm gonna hit that in this edge here. Now I know that my peony, oh yeah, look what's happening right there. I'm getting me some purple, which I'm actually gonna use the purple. Um, 
Do y'all see that down there? Look. Look what's happening right there. That's because I blended the peony and the peacock, which is a deeper blue, right over that peony, and it gave me a little bit of purple, which is good because I'm actually taking this blue down into, I want to go down into some purple. So I could dip into my purple, or I could dip right back in with my peony and introduce that, and look what's happening right there. I end up with a purple already. Just re-dip my uh, teal brush, my peacock. Probably need to get that out of y'all's way so y'all can see that. Look how pretty that is. So let's make that happen over here as well. Let's get a little bit of uh, peony, and I want purple right here. So put pink down. I don't want pink there, I want purple. Now I'm gonna take my brush, and I'm gonna add a little bit of this to it, a little bit more pink. And look what is happening. Got me some purple right there. Isn't that cool? How fun is this? You just gotta act like you know what you're doing, you know? <laughs> I know, isn't that cool? So I'm not gonna leave this here. I'm gonna actually keep covering that up, but it's just a layering process. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna take away my peacock here with a, I mean my uh, peachy color that we haven't named yet. I'm gonna add a little bit of soft pink. I put soft pink right on the tip here. I'm gonna spray the drawer about right there and I'm gonna bring in some soft pink just to kind of brighten that up a little bit right here. Now, you see how that soft pink is hitting lightly over the rest of those colors and it's catching the edge of that drawer? Isn't that beautiful? So when you paint with the darker, I'm gonna do it up here. Watch me go up. Watch me go up here. As I raise up, that soft pink's hitting the edge of that drawer right there and it's making like its own highlight. Do you see how it's making it look like it's been cross-hatched? You see that? Or like it's been, uh, it's starting to look like it's been um, distressed. Let me show you up close. Hopefully I don't use, lose you when I move. Okay, do you see up close how that looks like it's been distressed? We haven't distressed that. Have we used a sander on that? No, we have not. That is just a dry brush of a light color over a dark color. This does look like sherbet, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for a minute. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to it, let the colors work together, and I'm gonna move over here on this mess. What time is it? Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to go pretty soon, but I don't wanna leave this like this. Um, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the soft pink again, right here, and kinda cover up some of that. go and I'm gonna do the um, let's bring in some more peony let's do that didn't add enough peony to the middle and this is going to be hidden by uh, that's actually going to be hidden by the by the mold so I really need to get some more pink going on over here for sure. Pink is gonna be one of the primary colors. I'm gonna bring in, I do want a little bit of peacock here as well. So I think this would be a good point to maybe introduce these type of brushes where I can kind of deepen some areas. Spits a little bit of water in there. Kind of adds. Now, my, if I had my French tip with me right now, I would use that. It would be way better than this. So, you guys, please make sure you like and follow me over on my page because I promise you this piece will change a lot. Uh, it's going to progress. We are just getting started. It's going to progress, no doubt. I love this. Love it so far. A little crazy. It needs to be though because it's going to be super, super, super clean look with all of the black and white stripes. Um, so is that Sylvie? It is kind of, I love all the colors, right? Thank you. We're going to continue to layer, continue to layer and work them. The key to that is if you try this at home, 
Don't keep going while it's wet. You need to let this settle, move over to the other side, start working on it. Don't come back over and keep layering until this dries. If you do it while it's all wet, it ends up turning brown. It'll just look like mud. So you need to just let this dry, walk away, and come back to it and just keep going. Move to another section and then come back to this section. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Sylvie, I will have this posted on my page, Tracy's Fancy, um, when I'm done with it. I will have it posted. There will be a YouTube video about it. It will be on my blog. Dixie Bell will share it. You will see it, okay? Um, did we get a winner, Dixie Bell? Did y'all pick a winner? Did y'all pick a winner? Maybe they are. Did, did they announce you guys? Ellie or um, Anne, can y'all tell me, did they announce a winner for... Thank you, Libby. There's a delay. I hope they did. I hope they've announced a winner to the Gemstone Moose because it is... Uh, 7.45. You're welcome, Sylvie. So thanks, you guys, for watching. This is a lot of fun. These are, I'm going to give you one last look over here. Love the colors. Look at that. Ah! Oh, they haven't yet, Nina? Okay. Dixie Bell, can you grab us a winner? Someone who, thank you, Sue. Someone who gave us a name for the super washed out version of, um, our toned down version of apricot. Watching from New Mexico. Thank you. This is very New Mexico, right, Jeannie? Oh, yeah. This is super New Mexico here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, I don't want to turn my back. Oh, congratulations, Teresa McCarthy. Teresa McCarthy, you are the winner. Yay! Yay, 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 yay. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Teresa, you will love this. We are going to be highlighting with this gold right here. I'll be hitting all the edges with it. When I'm done, I'm going to be doing my molds with this. Um, I will be back live tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Um, right here. I'm also going live on my page right now when I leave here. So Dixie Bell, thank you so much for this wonderful product that lets me get out here and play like this and um, continue to inspire other people. I love, love, love working with y'all. Um, thanks, you guys, so much. Aw, <laughs> Belinda, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Well, follow me on my page. I'll be finishing it up over there, at least, at least adding to the other side. Okay, guys, y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you for being here. Um, Teresa, it was Teresa McCarthy, I think, Sandy. Oh, I don't know what the name was. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, guys, love you. We'll see y'all next Wednesday night, same time, same place, okay? Y'all take care. Bye.